The Will of the Many by James Eilington is the first in a brand new series from the author of the Lycanius Trilogy. It's a book that I've had on my list for most anticipated of 2023, and it's a book that I was lucky enough to get an advanced copy of thanks to NetGalley. So did it live up to the hype? Keep on watching to find out. This is Phantology. You may have heard of us. So first, high level, what is this book, right? I'm not going to do any spoilers, no worries there. The book doesn't come out until May, so obviously I'm not going to talk about any specific plot points. However, from the back of the book type of blurb, we know this is a first person coming of age story prominently featuring a school setting. It's a Romanesque type feel to the setting, and there is some like advanced magic technology type of things going on, but for the most part, it kind of has this like traditional fantasy era setting that we're familiar with. The magic system itself is a twist on some other magic systems we've seen. It's very similar to Brandon Sanderson's magic system in Warbreaker, but it's new and fresh here, and it perfectly fits, it perfectly integrates into all other parts of the story. So based off of that description, I can tell you, me personally, Stephen, this has a lot of the ingredients for a story that I'm going to like, and I was really excited to get into it. As I got into it more, I think there's a lot of kind of natural comparisons to other books that you could make. The strongest one is Red Rising because of the school type setting, because of the Romanesque with some kind of like futuristic magic technology a little bit. It's not nearly as sci-fi as Red Rising. You'll see that a lot. I think that's fair. But on the other hand, it is definitely fresh and new, and it's not just like another iteration of Red Rising. There's also a lot of Name of the Wind here. Maybe not quite in the same like beautiful prosaic style, but just the coming of age school, you know, kind of plucky character that's very smart. It's got a lot of quoth in here. So Name of the Wind, I think, is another fair comparison. And then as you get into it more, you're going to see that there's a lot of comparisons to Arlington's other trilogy, the Lycanius trilogy, with the way that he balances all of these plot elements and keeps you guessing and throws in some cool twists and some very unique ideas. I think one of the best things that Eilington brings to his books are some twists on the traditional fantasy story with some really cool ideas that he executes beautifully. So overall, with all of those descriptions aside, what did I, Stephen, personally think of the book? Well, I loved it. I, I really absolutely loved it. It's an easy five star for me. It's going to be a nine out of 10, and I'll kind of break down some specific categories, what I thought were stronger and weaker. But really, this book kept me up at night. I was totally addicted to it. It's a page turner. The pacing is fantastic. The characters really kind of suck you in and get you to care about them and, and are very, you get very sympathetic to the plight of the character, especially our main character, Viz, who's who's telling the story. I really don't have much negative to say. Like, I think you can nitpick, and I that's totally fair, but overall, this is one of my like this is one of my favorite books that I've really ever read. I think I don't want to go overboard here, but it might make my top 10 fantasy books ever. I think it's kind of hard to say because this is a series that is really just getting started and so you can't really rate a first book too much without seeing where the rest of the series goes. I'm pretty sure it's a trilogy. So, you know, in the next few years we should know uh, how to adequately place this one in our fantasy bookshelves. But I like I really don't have much negative to say, and I'm going to be raving about this for a while. I'm going to be recommending this to everyone. So if you were a fan of Eilington's first trilogy, if you're a fan of fantasy books in general and you've come across this video, definitely mark this one down. I think most people are really, really going to enjoy this. I mentioned earlier that the pacing was something that was really strong in this book, and I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for pacing. Almost perfect. I think a lot of people are going to say it starts kind of slow. That's fair. It takes maybe about like the first 30% is, you know, a lot of setup, a lot of kind of laying the groundwork for what's going to come later on. But once you start really getting into the story, 30% is where I think you get into part two. And once that happens, it's just breakneck pace through that part. I think it's necessary to lay the groundwork. Maybe it could have been faster paced in the beginning. Maybe a few people will put it down because it's slow, but it's not that slow. Like, I think you should be accustomed to fantasy books starting like this. 
Name of the Wind takes a lot of pages, maybe like 50 or 60 pages before Quoth starts telling his story, even before really anything happens. So I don't really, I, I can't be negative if a book takes a little bit longer to get started if it pays off later on and it does fantastically. So pacing nine out of 10, and one of the big reasons why it works so well is because the plot layers in all of these tensions and different things that are kind of pulling the reader in different directions that keep you, you know, you're just always on your heels as a reader, you're always expecting the, the other shoe to fall, right? Like something is going to go wrong at some point, and so you've always got to keep on turning the next page. It doesn't like end every chapter on a cliffhanger or anything, but you just never know what might be around the corner. And that's why I'm also going to give the plot a 9 out of 10. Really high level of what's going on here. So our main character, his name is Viz. He is being pulled in several different directions. He kind of has like three different lives that he's living, almost. And each of these different lives is a different faction of things that are going on in the story. And so Viz has to kind of walk the middle ground between everything. And as a result, the reader never knows exactly who is telling the truth to him, who's lying, who you can trust, who might have an ulterior motive or another secret, and that just creates such an interesting plot, so compelling to just keep on turning the next page. By the end, we have a really good balance of things are coming into place and the reader is thinking, oh my gosh, I should have seen this sooner because of these reasons, but at the same time, it's fine that I didn't because the payoff is great. Not all of our questions get answered. Certainly, Almost, I mean, one criticism I have is I really wish more questions are answered and I'm really looking forward to future books as a result because I think by the end I figured out some things, but definitely not laid out clearly. Like you have to be intelligent as the reader and I really appreciate that Eilington does that. He assumes his readers are smart and are going to read between the lines at times and piece things together. We are not having our hands held at all. There's really, there's like one info dumpy type thing towards the end, but it's not too long in the magic system itself, like is not really explained super well. You have to piece it together. You ha you really have to figure out everyone's different loyalties. So really masterful way of slowly revealing, slowly parceling out more and more information to the reader. So plot and pacing were very strong. Characters up next, I'm going to give eight out of 10, maybe like eight and a half out of 10. Viz Talimus is the best character. He's our first person character. He's the one we're in his head the whole time. We see the story through his eyes. And as a result, we are very sympathetic towards his plight. There are a lot of really strong emotional moments with him and just really beautifully done. Um, maybe like 75, 80% through the book, there's kind of a, a separate thing that happens that uh, that whole time I was just feeling for him so much. And uh, you know, I, I really wish that I could give more uh, specific plot details. I'm obviously not going to at this point. But aside from Viz, there are a lot of side characters. I think there are a lot of good side characters, but there are also a lot of side characters who take a while for us to get attached to. It would be nice maybe if we could flesh out these characters a little bit sooner. I think that's a fair criticism. One thing that I just, a small thing that I wish we had more of was just like a physical description of characters, I think Arlington kind of leaves it up to the reader's imagination to imagine, you know, to, to describe, right, to, to form a mental picture of who these people are. And maybe sometimes I need to be reminded of how they're supposed to look a little bit more. That's just a little thing for me. So even though some of the characters take a while to get attached to, by the end, I was really involved with their secrets coming to light and some of their fates being revealed. And so I think the emotion that it was invoking for me by the end just tells me that the characters were very well done. By the end, yeah, maybe could have been done a little bit quicker, a little more effectively, a little more efficiently with the descriptions. That's a fair criticism, but I really was attached to a lot of these people. Okay, so setting I mentioned it was Romanesque in the world. There's kind of some futuristic magical type technology. There's a school setting. I think that kind of gives you a little bit of a glimpse of, of what you can expect. The magic system itself is a lot like Warbreaker, where every person has some intrinsic magical like power to them. And if you acquire more of this power, you can rise up the pyramid a little bit and you have more sway and, and more power in this society. The society is basically the Roman Empire. 
And, you know, it doesn't take long to figure out that it's kind of rotten to its core and Viz is trying to live in this world and, and deal with his negative feelings towards the hierarchy. And that's part of the balancing act that he has to, to run. And it's, it's, it's really well done. My favorite setting is the school setting, obviously. Uh, it's a unique school. It's set on this cool island with a Cliffs of Dover vibe. And Islington does a really good job of describing all of his settings pretty efficiently and letting the reader really quickly form an image of their mind of what's going on. Speaking of, he does this really well with some action scenes, with some horror scenes even that were pretty startling and you know still kind of stick with me. So if you're someone who likes to visualize what's going on, I think you're really going to enjoy kind of going through like a, a movie almost of some of these scenes. So setting, I'm going to give 8 out of 10. Pros, I'm also going to give 8 out of 10. Overall, it's going to be kind of a round up to 9 out of 10, maybe an 8.5 total with the ratings I've given so far. The pros is first person. It's also present tense, which I admit is not my favorite. And when I read the first page, I kind of rolled my eyes and I thought, why are we doing this? Because I think past tense is almost always the better choice. But actually, after finishing, I think I, I do understand the reason why. I don't know if I love it, but, you know, it keeps you right there in Viz's head. You're, you're along for the ride as the action is happening. I think it's a nice way to describe things. Otherwise, the prose is good. Uh, Eilington doesn't really take a whole lot of time to delve into metaphor or simile or try to make his writing overly beautiful. It's really kind of in the Sanderson camp of the stained glass window that you can, or sorry, the clear window that you can look right through and see what's going on without it getting in the way. So solid job with the pros. So my preference, my overall favorite books ever in fantasy are things like Name of the Wind, Patrick Rothfuss, anything Brandon Sanderson has written, anything Abercrombie has written, anything George R. R. Martin has written, you know, all of his Song of Ice and Fire, Jim Butcher, Dresden Files. This is kind of the vein of books that I like. I mean, I, I know I just listed off all the mainstream fantasy books, but you can see from what I've described that this is something that I personally am going to like. If executed properly, the setup of the book that I described is right down my alley. So I understand maybe if your preferences are different than mine, yeah, you know, maybe this is not your favorite, but I think you're going to like it. If you like the same type of books that I like, you're really going to like this one. Like, I know I just said like a lot, but there's a lot, there's a lot to like. There's a lot to love in The Will of the Many, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the hierarchy. Honestly, my my main criticism of the whole thing is that it's over, and I need to know what's going to happen next, but I'm going to have to wait some time uh, before the next book.